This year's quarterback class is great. We might see six guys go in the first round, and that might help your favorite team or, heck, your fantasy team this fall. But in this video, we're looking at the best of the best. I'm talking about the top six quarterbacks, the guys who are supposed to go in the top 100 picks of the NFL draft. Starting with Washington quarterback Michael Penix Jr., my number six quarterback in this draft. And look, this guy has been in college football for a while. He's not just a senior. He's a sixth-year senior who spent time at two different programs in Indiana and Washington. Now, there's a lot to his career. In 2019, it was his first year as the starter as you can see right here and he had a nice year 8.7 yards per attempt his best season with indiana that year completing nearly 69 percent of his passes and then in 2020 it was a shortened year due to covid but he led indiana to being the 12th overall team in the country now Penix's 2021 season ended due to an injury and he transferred to washington where his career took a next step forward Penix averaged 8.8 .8 yards per attempt in his two-year washington career completing 66 percent of his passes and throwing for 344 yards Yards per game. Now, Michael Penix is your typical pocket passer. He's not all that mobile, but he is able to avoid sacks at a pretty strong and maybe even elite level. His biggest positives are easily his arm strength and velocity when throwing the ball. He's a downfield thrower who can hit outside throws consistently. According to PFF, Penix ranked top 10 in big time throw rate last season while ranking 12th in avoiding turnovers. So the translation there is that's just an unreal combination. You're getting a guy who can make big plays, those big time throws, while also not putting the ball in harm's ways with turnovers and interceptions fumbles all that bad stuff and that number one trait his big arm the arm talent yeah it led to a lot of results he led the nation in outside the numbers passing yards and completions but there are concerns and there's a potential that these push him into the second round of the draft Penix doesn't throw with anticipation well and his middle of the field passing is a big question also his footwork could use improvement at the pro level the other concern for NFL teams and this one is fair is that Penix suffered two separate knee injuries during his college career now Penix has proven the last two seasons that he can stay healthy but look he's going to be 24 right around the time of the draft like a week later may 8th he'll turn 24 years old so he's going to be one of the older rookie prospects that we've seen in quite a long time which could be a concern when you have an injury background you're an older prospect and somebody is investing maybe even a first round pick a lot of capital in you Penix also benefited from having three nfl caliber wide receivers the past two seasons at washington against weaker defensive backs the nfl team that would probably benefit the most from michael Penix is one that uses a good play action passing game with a solid run game because we saw last year Penix lead the entire college football landscape with 96 first downs and zero turnover worthy plays off play action so you can see right here Penix is expected to go at the end of the first or the beginning of the second it's going to be pretty close there he's overall projected to go 31st the first round pick so we'll see where he ends up again like, like I said at the beginning we might have six quarterbacks in the first round now this next quarterback is my quarterback five and he's probably the most polarizing player in the entire draft and his name is JJ McCarthy out of Michigan and it seems like we get a quarterback quarterback prospect like this every single year each year the media and public are completely torn on one QB previous years it was Anthony Richardson Malik Willis Trey Lance and heck even Justin Herbert now here's what you need to know about McCarthy he spent his three-year college career at Michigan where the first year he sat behind Cade McNamara who was there and then in year two he started the season game one behind Cade McNamara but his coach Jim Harbaugh apparently the story goes wanted him to start the entire time but the other coaches really didn't but in the 2022 season McCarthy got a chance to start in week two and he just ran away with the job and what does he do he took Michigan to the college football playoffs in both seasons now his 2023 season was honestly really good but there's going to be one question mark here and it's that he only threw 314 times what does that break down to he threw about 22 times per game which is not normally what you see out of a guy going potentially in the first round the first five or the first 10 picks of the NFL draft but he was insanely efficient 9.1 yards per attempt well above average normally for college averages is like seven yards per attempt seven and a half and completed 73% of his passes, 22 touchdowns to just four INTs, very efficient, very productive on his limited sample of 22 attempts per game. Now, McCarthy has okay size at six foot three and 219 pounds, a good arm and quality rushing ability. He's best known for throwing into tight windows and not being afraid to challenge defenses in the middle of the field, especially in 2023 when he took a step forward against reading pressures and defenses. And you can see right here on PFF, they deem him the best player on third down. He's just kind of clutch. McCarthy completed 81 and a half percent his adjusted completion percentage of his third down passes this was actually less than another quarterback in this class but when you factor in how often he was throwing downfield compared to that quarterback he was throwing on average 10.6 yards downfield and still completing over 80 percent of his adjusted completions the whole translation from all that math right there is that this dude is clutch in the middle of the field at picking up pressures and he can complete passes on third and fourth downs he stays calm cool and collected but since he's a polarizing prospect of course there are concerns the biggest concerns are his 
smaller sample of college throws and his overall decision making now the first part of that for the lower volume is just the offense he was in michigan led by jim harbaugh is a run first team and harbaugh his entire career has run the ball and in terms of his decision making we saw a massive step forward from 2022 to 2023 with decision making so that's good to see progression it should only improve with some nfl coaching another concern is that it appears that he does have a little bit more issues throwing left but again this is a limited sample mccarthy has the tools to make it in the nfl plain and simple especially considering he ran a successful pro ready offense in college the past two seasons if you're just getting back into the swing of things jj mccarthy is definitely expected to go in the first round and he's been steamed all the way from the 20s to the teens now to being a potential top 10 to top 5 pick overall a mock draft database right here projected to go seventh overall now for a lot of people jj mccarthy is maybe their number two quarterback probably their number three or four for me is my number five because i think this next guy is the most underrated quarterback in the entire nfl draft and that would be bo nicks out of oregon who i'm higher on than the market and yes indeed i do prefer him over jj mccarthy bo spent five years in college and his first three were at auburn where he was up and down and a lot of downs towards the end of his career but honestly he had some pretty terrible coaching he would then transfer to oregon for his final two years in 2022 and 2023 and this is where he really broke out he averaged an insane 9.2 yards per attempt 300 passing yards per game and completed 75 percent of his passes and oh yeah he's also a mobile guy he added 28 rushing yards per game which is an upside for any of you that play dynasty fantasy football or just normal fantasy football now there's a lot to like about Bo. he's experienced and knows how to make pre-snaps read and knows where to go with the ball in general he gets the ball out quick and is accurate while avoiding sacks at an elite level nicks led all of college football in adjusted completion percentage and has the lowest turnover worthy play rate in the country now that stat was courtesy of pff and so is this next one we just talked about how mccarthy was really good on third downs but look at this nicks was the only other quarterback to register a higher adjusted completion percentage than mccarthy and this is insane on third or fourth downs he was completing 86.5 percent of his passes when you adjust for drops and just throwaways out of bounds that's nearly nine out of ten times he is completing a third or fourth down insane but it's not just nicks thriving in the clutch situations he also thrives when under pressure and he was terrible under pressure at auburn this completely changed at oregon right here you can see over the last two seasons no quarterback in the fbs has a higher pff passing grade under pressure than bo nicks at 85 pretty damn impressive so he's clutch on third and fourth downs and he's clutch under pressure what is not to like well people just question overall what his ceiling can be some people have some concerns about his footwork and when you say what can his ceiling be think about a guy like a jared goff that's who scouts compare him to often quality quarterback but really what is his ceiling can he get you to the super bowl or win a super bowl for you nicks also has a lot of check down and short passing game production at oregon which has been a knock against him his average depth of target was the fourth lowest in the country it's a legit concern in question but it was also just a part of the oregon offense now another quick thing to mention about nicks and it is a positive we'll get off all the negatives we just discussed because he is one of the best players if not the best quarterback in this class outside the pocket nicks had an 82 percent adjust to completion percentage on off script or broken plays look this is a dude who is nfl ready in my opinion he has great decision making a quality arm and elite accuracy you can see right here he's right around that end of the first round right where michael Penix is supposed to go it'll see it'll be interesting to see who teams prefer i think they're gonna go nicks he's just healthier he's shown a little bit more overall some versatility 32nd overall first round pick right now is his projection but easily can fall into the second round so now we get to the top three quarterbacks and these guys in my opinion are just locked and loaded this is the proper order in my opinion from everything i've looked at and it starts with lsu quarterback and the heisman winner from this past year Jaden daniels who also has been in college football for a long time how long you might be asking well in 2019 he was a starting quarterback for arizona state where he helped brandon Ayuk have a massive season and since then Ayuk has played four nfl seasons has completed his rookie contract and still you have Jaden daniels in college in 2020 daniels season was cut short due to covid and in 2021 he had a poor year of 10 touchdowns and 10 interceptions for arizona state so from there he transferred to lsu for his final two seasons where everything turned around in his first year there everything changed he was much more efficient and less risky with the ball 17 touchdowns just three interceptions and then in 2023 he broke out in a major way when he averaged 11.7 yards per attempt threw 40 touchdowns to just four interceptions completed 72 percent of his passes and had over 1100 rushing yards and if you don't know a little bit of a reminder yeah he won the heisman based off this insane season daniels ended up averaging 77 rushing yards per game at lsu an elite dual threat quarterback and one that a lot of fantasy football players are going to love when he goes in the first round and starts for a team daniels dual threat upside is likely his most intriguing part of his profile but he has many other strengths such as his arm talent at all three levels of the football field his machine like throwing mechanics and consistency and his footwork in the pocket daniels led the entire nation in deep ball passer rating and completions and according to pff he ranked third in big time throws while having the fourth lowest turnover worthy play rate he can pretty much make 
make any throw all three levels of the field whether it's outside the numbers or the middle of the field but there still are concerns to his game daniel struggles when it comes to throwing with anticipation he takes too many hits as a runner and he also takes a lot of sacks due to slower processing but he has the unteachable trait and quick twitch elusiveness as a runner he could be taught to slide or step out of bounds he could be taught to speed up his processing but this elite elusiveness as a runner gives him a solid floor and immense upside in the nfl now he's being compared to lamar jackson which makes sense because of that running profile but i would say that he's not on the same level as lamar as a runner or maybe even as a passer in my opinion i'd say he compares closer to a marcus mariota coming out of college which not right now marcus mariota when he was coming out of college or even a deshaun watson daniels is another quarterback like a jj mccarthy we talked about that consensus is probably going to be a top 10 pick and for daniels it's most likely he does not leave those top five picks because even if he doesn't go in the first two there's a decent chance a team trades up to try and get him at three if the patriots don't take him there or at four if the cardinals trade back now before we get into the top two quarterbacks and these guys are head and shoulders in an elite tier of their own i just want to let you know about the 2024 fantasy blueprint it might seem early but this is the best time to get it if you want to win your fantasy league this blueprint has everything you need to do just that and it's going to help you not just right now prepare during the summer for your fantasy league but every single week during the entire year all the way up to your fantasy playoffs and here's the thing if you don't make your fantasy playoffs i'll just refund the payment of ten dollars it's just ten dollars one time for the entire year by the way but it's risk-free because if you don't make your playoffs i'll refund that and how do you get this well you just click the link in the description below and follow the two simple steps or scan the qr code right now on the screen this price will be increasing in a few weeks so be sure to take advantage right now if you plan on getting it anyways my number two quarterback is drake may a lot of people are pushing him down to number three or number four i just personally don't get it may is one of the younger quarterbacks in this class he's still just 21 years old and spent three seasons at north carolina now in his first season there he sat behind sam howell but he immediately broke out in his second year in 2022 where he throws over 500 times he's averaging 8.4 yards per attempt 66 per completion 66 percent completion percentage and 38 touchdowns to just seven ints and here's the wild part he is very mobile almost 700 rushing yards was about 50 rushing yards per game and then after 2022 he lost his best receiver josh downs who had a great rookie year for the colts downs had back-to-back thousand yard years in college for unc and without downs in 2023 the offense in general took a bit of a step back they lost some other people as well in two less games you see him averaging 8.5 yards per attempt so still efficient completions go down a little bit 63 percent there was a lot more missed overall throws on his tape as well and just 24 touchdowns to nine interceptions also a little bit less rushing production so still overall a solid season an efficient and productive season but just dropped in some areas now here are a couple of positives that stand out right away just based on the eye test he is a big quarterback he's your prototypical big quarterback six foot four 223 pounds and he's also has the speed he ran a 455 40 time which is his high school metrics which would be one of the fastest quarterbacks and it kind of adds up when you look at his tape and his rushing production so a big fast quarterback who has also a big arm this is why he's drawing a lot of comparables to one josh allen may is best known for his arm talent and out of the pocket broken play ability also his middle of the field passing is strong more specifically may led this entire quarterback class in big time throws to the middle of the field now let's discuss some areas of concern for his game people knock his footwork ball placement pre-snap processing and decision making but i personally don't really see the processing speed as that much of a concern on tape and now the ball placement criticism might seem odd for a guy who completed 65 percent of his passes the last two years but this last year in 2023 specifically there were a lot of wide open missed throws now there's a chance this could have just been a chemistry issue with newer receivers as he wasn't dealing with josh downs anymore but also it's important to point out that we're kind of nitpicking at this point because this guy is going to probably go with one of the first three picks and right now the consensus seems to be that he's going to go second overall to the washington commanders and maybe even first overall in a crazy situation to the chicago bears so we are most definitely nitpicking here expect him to be taken with a top two pick now my number one quarterback is probably also going to be the number one pick in the draft and this isn't going to shock you if you've been paying attention caleb williams out of usc is probably going to go to the bears but i want to go a little bit deeper here into his profile because williams was undeniable from the moment that he stepped on the field replacing spencer rattler in 2021 versus texas when he led a comeback throwing for over 200 yards and two touchdowns and in that first season he went on as a 19 year old to have a great season averaging over nine yards per attempt which he did every year of his career and completing 65 percent of his passes 21 touchdowns to just four interceptions may would then end up following lincoln riley to usc for his final two seasons where he only improved even more averaging 9.2 yards per attempt and completing 68 percent of his passes while posting 93 total touchdowns to just 10 interceptions in his final two years and despite losing first round wide receiver talent jordan addison after the 2022 season may was still efficient productive and accurate in 2023 tossing 30 touchdowns to just five interceptions now there have been questions about his overall decision making especially in games against notre dame and utah last year where it really stood out but part of this could be because of the usc defense usc ranked 
second on defense and often Williams had to play from behind and when you play from behind it's pretty obvious that you're in passing situations which mean that you might have to force the ball more and face a lot more blitzes now let's talk about some of the other concerns about Caleb Williams he gets critique for holding on to the ball too long which does lead to some fumbling concerns but these flaws are also just a part of the system that leads to a lot of upside the system that he was in under Lincoln Riley benefited when you held on to the ball a little bit longer Williams was also one of the first prospects we've seen to deny teams access to his medical records he only allowed a select few teams to get them so of course this starts to open up the questions in the tinfoil hat conspiracy theories is he hiding something that he doesn't want the entire public and media to know about if that was the case I think people would find out by now I think he just likes his privacy now those were the bad nitpicking parts of his game if he's going to be the number one pick of course there's a lot of positives he's best known for his accuracy off-platform throws leadership and arm talent he's a better processor than you may be led to believe and possibly the best broken play quarterback in the draft in fact as you can see right here on pff they named him the best out of structure quarterback because over the last two seasons williams has 21 big time throws when moved off the spot so a broken play which are more than double any other quarterback behind him and that next quarterback would be drake may and nobody was better than williams when given time to throw williams ranked number one in the nation in passing grades from a clean pocket look this guy caleb williams has all the ability in the world with just a little bit of coaching in the nfl and some more experience he has the ability to completely turn around the bears franchise now he profiles out in my opinion more like a Jameis winston level prospect coming out of college just a tier below that trevor lawrence type player and oh yeah not to mention let's just say the bears have done a great job putting him in a position to succeed they go out there they get another running back they have three legit running backs in swift khalil herbert and roshan johnson they go out there and they get dj Moore last year so that was nice in general preparing for this year that helped justin fields a little but then they get the crafty veteran who is over 30 years old but has no, shown no signs of slowing down in keenan allen so a couple of running backs a couple of receivers and i would say cole Komet is a capable tight end has put up some big seasons but mostly because he's had high volume but also gerald everett's there so you have a handful of all these veterans and and producers on the team which is surely much better than last year's first round pick and bryce young had when he went to the carolina panthers so these are the best quarterbacks in the 2024 nfl draft these guys are all expected to go within the first two rounds and heck maybe they'll all go in round one now if you want to see the best wide receivers the top 10 guys in this draft ranked out for you well you need to check out this beautiful video right here and by the way if you're not already subscribed to the channel we're so close to 100,000 you might as well go ahead and tap that subscribe button and help us out